morning students today we are going to take new lesson mauryas so it is the first dynasty which is established in india so mauryas it is the first dynasty so today we are going to discuss about mauryas so mauryas so after the decline of nandas mauryas become the powerful ruler of north india mauryas empire the mauryan empire was the first great empire of india under their regime a number of small kingdoms were united first time the whole of india it was under the control of mauryas the mauryan empire was the first great empire of india under their regime a number of small kingdoms were united and brought under a single rule india achieved political unity for the first time the mauryas not only liberated north western part of india from the foreign rule that time alexander the great he conquered the northern north western part of india chandragupta maurya he defeated and he acquired the north western part of india from the foreign rule but also brought uniform administration from north to south and west to east they brought single administration uniform administration which continued for several centuries chandragupta maurya was the founder of this dynasty so who is the founder of mauryan dynasty chandragupta maurya pataliputra modern patna was their capital the old name of patna is pataliputra at present it is in bihar state of india bihar capital city of india dharma chakra was their royal emblem the wheel so center of a national flag we will have ashoka chakra or dharma chakra so that was their royal emblem now we are going to learn about the origin of mauryan dynasty there are many theories regarding the origin of chandragupta maurya because he was the founder of mauryan dynasty but there are many theories because it happened 2300 years ago so which are the sources of information available to know about the mauryan dynasty the first one vishakadatta's mudra rakshasa calls chandragupta maurya has mayura sutta he lived along with the uh, peacock so the second one according to jain literature says that he belonged to a tribe of mayura poshakas or peacock tamers the jain literature tells that he belonged to a tribe of maurya that is mayura poshakas or he used to take care of peacock peacock tamers the third important sources available to know about the mauryan dynasty is the word maurya is derived from mura supposed to be the concubine of nanda king ah magada the fourth view according to the buddhist literature mahavamsha he was of a kshatriya clan known as maurya which ruled at tipalevana many historians have accepted this opinion according to the buddhist literature mahavamsha it is also a sacred book of buddhism so he was of chandragupta maurya he was of a kshatriya clan so we already we have learned the varana system in vedic period varana means caste brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudras brahmanas means highly learned people kshatriya means they are physically strong who used to protect the kingdom and vaishyas business class people and kshatriyas they used to serve all the three varana people 
So hence we used to call them as Shudras. So here, according to Buddhist literature, Mahavamsha, he was of a Kshatriya clan known as Maurya. Actually, so what was the name of his dynasty? Maurya, which ruled as Pipalivana. A number of trees are there, Pipali trees. <coughs> Many historians have accepted this opinion. So that time when Chandragupta Maurya was ruling our country, <coughs> the northern part of India, it was divided into 16 states or Mahajanapadas. Some of them were republics. <coughs> now we are going to see the 16 uh, republics and their capitals. Anga, capital city, Champa, Magadha, Rajagriha or Patali, Putra, Kashi, capital city, Varanasi, Kosala, Saketa, Vaiji, Vaiji, Malla, Kushi Nagara, Chedi, Tisvatrati, Tisvatrati, Vatsa, Kausambi, Kuru, Indraprastha, Panchala, Kampila, Matsya, Viradhanagara, Surasena, Mathura, Asmaka, Potana, Avanti, Ujjaini, Gandhara, Takshashila, Kamboja, Rajapura. These are the 16 Maha Janapra, Janapadas. So now we are going to see the sources of information available to know about the Mauryan dynasty. <coughs> Two mark they are asking. The important sources which help us to know about the history of the Mauryas are <coughs> the first one, Artha Shastra of Kautilya. He was a Kautilya, was a Takshashila Brahmin. He wrote a book known as Artha Shastra. The other name for Artha Shastra is Economics. Next, a foreign writer, Megasthenes, he wrote a book known as Indica about India. He wrote a book known as Indica. The third book, Mudra Rakshasa of Vishakadatta. Vishakadatta wrote a book known as Mudra Rakshasa. And Ashokan Nedix, throughout the length and breadth of his kingdom, he carved rock edicts. That is also another one sources of information available to know about the Mauryan dynasty. Monuments like Stupas, Viharas, Silon Chronicles, that is Deepavamsha and Mahavamsha. Now we are going to learn about the founder of Mauryan dynasty, Chandragupta Maurya. He ruled our country between 324 to 300 BCE. Chandragupta Maurya was the founder of this dynasty. However, very little is known about him. He had lost his father, was taken away by Chanakya, a Brahmin of Takshashila, who gave him the necessary education. So Chandragupta Maurya was the founder of Mauryan dynasty. However, very little was known about him. But uh, during his childhood days, he lost his father and he was taken away by Chanakya. He was a Takshashila Brahmin. And he gave him the necessary education. And he helped Chandragupta Maurya in the establishment of Mauryan Empire. So Chanakya was the uh, godfather of Chandragupta Maurya. So how he acquired one after the other kingdoms of India? Conquest of Punjab and Magadha. Chandragupta built a strong army under the guidance of Chanakya. So who guided him to have a strong army in Chanakya? What was the other name of Chanakya? Kautilya. So Chandragupta built a strong army under the guidance of Chanakya. He defeated the small rulers of Punjab and captured it. Thereafter, he marched again as to Magadha. He killed Dhananda, the last ruler of Nandas, and ended his oppressive rule and laid the foundation for the Mauryan Empire. So the founder of Mauryan dynasty, Chandragupta, he built a strong army under the guidance of Chanakya. 
he defeated the small rulers of Punjab and captured Punjab state. Afterwards, he marched again as to Magadha. He killed Dhananandha, the last ruler of Nandas, and ended his cruel rule and laid the foundation for the Mauryan Empire. Next, war with Seleucas. Alexander had established his power or suzerainty over the northwestern part of India and had nominated his representatives to rule over them. Chandragupta Maurya defeated them and annexed the territories to his empire. So Alexander the Great, he was a Roman ruler. So he established his power by conquering the northwestern part of India. To look after his provinces, he appointed representatives. Chandragupta Maurya defeated those representatives and joined the territories to his empire. After Alexander's death, Seleucus became the master of the Greek empire over Central Asia. In 305 BCE, he crossed the Indus to reconquer Alexander's Indian possession. So after the death of Alexander, Seleucus, he became the master of the Greek empire over Central Asia. So in 305 BCE, he crossed the Sindhu River to reconquer Alexander's Indian possession. Chandragupta Maurya defeated him. Hence, Seleucus had to conclude a treaty with him. Accordingly, he gave Chandragupta Maurya a large territory because Chandragupta Maurya defeated Seleucus. So, Seleucus, he ha made an agreement with Chandragupta Maurya. According to this agreement, he gave Chandragupta Maurya a large empire, a large territory which included Kabul, Afghanistan, Kandhar and Baluchistan. He also gave his daughter in marriage to Chandragupta Maurya. Seleucus, he gave his daughter in marriage to Chandragupta Maurya. In return, Chandragupta Maurya presented him with 500 elephants trained in warfare. So Chandragupta, he presented him with 500 elephants trained in warfare. Seleucus maintained friendly relations with Mauryas and sent Megasthenes as ambassador to Pataliputra. So he had good relationship with Seleucus. Even Seleucus maintained friendly relations with Mauryas and he sent Megasthenes as ambassador to Pataliputra, the capital city of Mauryan dynasty. It is said that Chandragupta Maurya undertook many other military conquests and he established a large empire. But we do not have a clear picture of all such conquests. <coughs> Similarly, the extent of his empire cannot be clearly demarcated. So another one view. It is said that Chandragupta Maurya undertook many other, he waged war against other kingdoms and he established a large empire. But we don't have a clear picture of all such conquests. Similarly, the extent of his empire cannot be clearly demarcated. So what are the bounties of Chandragupta? We don't know. According to the Jain tradition, in the last days of his reign, Chandragupta abdicated the throne and embraced Jainism under the influence of Jain scholar Bhadrabhahu. According to the Jain tradition, Jainism, in the last days of his reign, Chandragupta, he gave the throne and embraced and he converted to Jainism under the influence of Jain scholar Badravahu. So under the influence of Badravahu, he became a Jain. He spent his last days at Shavana Belagola in Karnataka and died by performing Sallekana in 300 BCE. He spent his last days. He came to South India because North India witnessed a, 
uh, Hamil, so he came to Karnataka and he stayed in Shavana Benagoda Hassan district of Karnataka and died by performing Sallekana. Sallekana means fasting unto death. In 300 BCE, the hill on which he stayed is known as Chandragiri and the temple built by him as Chandragupta Vasadi. So he stayed, is where he stayed, that hill is known as Chandragiri Hill and he built a temple. So we used to call it as Chandragupta Vasadi. So long we were discussing, Chanakya wrote a book known as <coughs> so we were discussing Artha Shastra. So what famous work of Chanakya is Artha Shastra. Who is this Chanakya? His original name was Kautilya. Kautilya was a famous statesman of ancient India. He was also known by other names, Chanakya and Vishnu Gupta. His original name was Kautilya. But uh, our people they used to call him as Chanakya or Vishnu Gupta. He played an important role in the dethronement of Nandas and the establishment of Mauryan Empire. So Kautilya, he played an important role in the dethronement of Nandas and the establishment of Mauryan Empire. He was also largely responsible for setting up of a well-organized administrative system. When Chandragupta was, Chandragupta Maurya was ruling our country, so the people were living a happy life. So he was also largely responsible for setting up of a well-organized administrative system. Kautilya wrote Artha Shastra in Sanskrit language. So which language Kautilya wrote Artha Shastra 2300 years ago? Artha Shastra in Sanskrit language. Sanskrit <coughs> is the mother language of all languages of India. Dr. Shama Shastri, the librarian of Oriental Research Institute, Mysore, discovered the text in 1905 and published its English version in 1909. So who discovered <coughs> this book means Dr. Shama Shastri, he worked as a librarian of Oriental Research Institute, Mysore. He discovered the text mm. in 1905. So 115 years before he discovered this textbook and published its English version in 1909. Its contents can be divided into three main parts. The book itself is divided into three parts. That is <coughs> Artha Shastra. The first part deals with the king, his council, and the government. The first part it deals, so who is ruling our country? Who are the ministers? Who is responsible for the king's administration and the government? What powers the government is had? The second part deals with the civil and criminal law. Nowadays how we are calling constitution. So the second part deals with... <coughs> Whoever they will make any uh, the, any problem if they are creating, whether it is civil or criminal. So, the second part deals with civil law as well as criminal law. The third part deals with the interstate law. How we must have good relationship with our neighboring countries. Inter interstate law, diplomacy, that is good administrative system and war. Artha Shastra outlines the seven limbs of the state. In this book, Artha Shastra, Chanika explains the seven organs of the state, Sapta Anga, namely, Raja was the first Anga kingship. Mantri means the ministers who is responsible for administration, Janapada, population, and land. Third, Durga. Fourth, fifth one, Krosha, that is banking system nowadays we are calling, treasury. The sixth one, army. And Mitra, Alice. How we must have good 
relations with our neighboring kings, agreements, allies. Now we are going to learn about Bindusara. He was the son of Chandragupta Maurya. The successor of Chandragupta was his son Bindusara. He ruled from 300 to 273 BC. So he ruled our country between 24 years he ruled. But nothing much is known about Bindusara. His son Ashoka became the king after Bindusara. So after the death of Bindusara, his son Ashoka became the king after Bindusara. Ashoka the Great. So the, f the first ruler of India, Ashoka the Great. Always we used to call him as Ashoka the Great. He ruled our country between 273 to 232. Ashoka was the greatest ruler of the Mauryas and one of the renowned rulers of the world. He is mentioned in his edicts as Devanamatriya and Priyadarshi. They indicate his great personality. So who was the greatest ruler of the Mauryas? It is none other than Ashoka. And one of the renowned rulers of the world, not only in India, but he was one of the renowned rulers of the world. He is mentioned in his rock edicts as Devanamatriya. Devanamatriya means one who is liked by gods. And Priyadarshi. Priyadarshi means one who is loved by his people. They indicate his great personalities. These two titles, it indicates his great personality. So now we are going to learn about when he ruled our country. He came to power in 273 BCE. But his coronation was celebrated in 269 BCE. The history from 273 to 69 is not clear. We don't know what they were doing during this time. But some historians believe that during this period, there was a struggle for succession between Ashoka and his hundred brothers. Historians they believe that during this period, he was fighting with his hundred brothers for succession between Ashoka and his hundred brothers. There was a struggle for succession between Ashoka and his hundred brothers. So now we are going to learn about the Kalinga War. So 261 BC. So this one they are asking for chronology. This is very, very important. During the reign of Ashoka, Kalinga was a powerful kingdom. Ashoka wanted to extend his imperialism. <coughs> imperialism means dominating one country by other country, socially, economically and politically. So he wanted to extend his imperialism over Kalinga. So he marched upon Kalinga. A fierce battle was fought between them. The 13th rock edict gives as details about the conquest of Kalinga and its results. So which rock edict gives the detail about the conquest of Kalinga war? 13th rock edict. It tells that about 1 lakh soldiers were killed and 1 lakh 50,000 were captured as prisoners of war. Ashoka was so filled with sorrow at the sight of bloodshed that this became his last war. He decided not to wage wars in future. So what is the importance of 13th Rock Edict? It gives has details about the conquest of Kalinga war and its results. It tells that about 1 lakh soldiers were killed. Because of one war, how many people they died? One lakh soldiers were killed. 
and 150000 were captured as prisoners of war ashoka was so filled with sorrow at the sight of bloodshed that this became his last war the first war itself it became his last war as he decided not to wage wars in future ashoka changed his foreign policy instead of digvijaya that is military conquest he adopted the policy of dharma vijaya winning the hearts of the people thus the war of kalinga became a turning point in the life of ashoka he embraced buddhism under the influence of upagupta a buddhist saint saint so ashoka changed his foreign policy he don't want to extend his kingdom instead of digvijaya that is military conquest he adopted the policy of dharma vijaya that is winning the hearts of the people thus the war of kalinga became a turning point in the life of ashoka he embraced afterwards he became a, he, be, he was the follower of buddhism under the influence of upagupta so who was upagupta he was a buddhist saint ashoka empire extended from kashmir and afghanistan regions in the north to karnataka suvarnagiri in the south and from bengal in the east sind and baluchistan in the west so ashoka empire extended from kashmir and afghanistan region in the north towards the south suvarnagiri in the south and bengal in the east sind and baluchistan in the west edicts of ashoka rock edicts so ashoka was the first to issue edicts in india before wandal or runda country we don't have any information who was the first ruler who issued rock edicts in india ashoka they have been found throughout the length and breadth of the empire from north india till karnataka <coughs> from eastern part of india to western part of india the edicts help us to know about his ideals and outlook besides throwing light on the religion society and administration the rock edicts it tells about the ideals <coughs> and outlook besides throwing light on the religion <coughs> society and administration of the mauryas the language of the edict is prakrit pali and greek how we carved in which language he carved the rock edicts prakrit pali and greek language and the script used is brahmi and karoshi brahmi script which was a riddle for a long time was deciphered by james princip in 1831 <coughs> who identified the brahmi script so it was a riddle for a long time first time who found a, found out this brahmi script means james princip in the year 18 31 the edicts are classified into major rock edicts minor rock edicts pillar inscriptions and cave inscription so the inscription uh, the edicts are classified into rock edicts are classified into major rock edicts minor rock edicts pillar inscription and cave inscription first we are going to see edicts in karnataka a number of ashokan edicts have been discovered in karnataka they have been found at maski in raichur district gavimata and palki gonda in koppala district so where and all we will see ashoka's edicts in karnataka first in raichur district so which was that place maski in raichur district and koppala district gavimata and palki gonda third chitradurga district so which are the places we used to see ashoka's rock edict brahmagiri siddhapura and jatingarameshwara 
ಇನ್ ಚಿತ್ರದುರ್ಗ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಬಳ್ಳಾರಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಮಿಟ್ಟೂರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಉದಯಗೋಳಂ ಇನ್ ಬಳ್ಳಾರಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಲಬುರಗಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಸನ್ನತಿ ಇನ್ ಕಲಬುರಗಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಟೂ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಮಾ ವೆರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಅಶೋಕ ಎಡಿಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ರಾಯಚೂರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಗವಿಮಠ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಲ್ಕಿಗೊಂಡ ಇನ್ ಕೊಪ್ಪಳ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ದ ಎಡಿಕ್ ದ ರಾಕ್ ಎಡಿಕ್ಸ್ ರೆಫರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದೇವನಾಮ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಿಯದರ್ಶಿ ಸೊ ದ ರಾಕ್ ಎಡಿಕ್ಸ್ ರೆಫರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದೇವನಾಮ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಿಯದರ್ಶಿ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಡೌಟ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಡೌಟ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ದ ಎಡಿಕ್ಸ್ ರೆಫರ್ ಟು ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದೇವನಾಮ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಿಯದರ್ಶಿ which created doubts among the historians who is this king whether it is a name of uh, king uh, devanama priya and priyadarshi so it created doubt among the historians regarding the king who issued them the maski edict along with calcutta edict refers to the king has devanama priya ashoka sa <coughs> this confirm that Dev- the uh, devanama priya and priyadarshi raja was none other than ashoka himself so ma which two edicts refers to the king has devanama priya ashoka sa one is maski edict another one calcutta edict it refers to the king has devanama priya ashoka sa this confirmed that devanama priya and priyadarshi raja was none other than ashoka himself religion so he gave importance for buddhism ashoka made a great contribution to religion according to him the law of piety piety means <coughs> showing mercy on others the law of piety consisted of the following virtues the first parents must be obeyed and teachers must be respected the second important virtue everyone should speak the truth the third important virtue servants youngsters and dependents must be treated with love the fourth virtue no injury should be caused to men and animals the fifth virtue one must suppress anger cruelty and extravagance now what are the measures adopted for the spread of buddhism five mark they are asking this question so ashoka was responsible for the spread of buddhism not only in india but also outside india <coughs> he took many measures for the spread of buddhism they are the first one he visited the buddhist holy places such as lumbini garden buddha born in lumbini garden kapilahastu gaya where he acquired a spiritual knowledge enlightenment saranath he delivered his first sermon near saranath and kushinagar and arranged discourses on religion so ashoka he visited the buddhist holy places such as lumbini garden kapilahastu <coughs> his father was the uh, ruler of kapilahastu gaya saranath and kushinagar and arranged discourses meetings on religion he built a large number of monasteries <coughs> all over the empire and spent large sums of money in endowing them he built a large number of monasteries monasteries means where the saint monks they used to live and spent large sums of money in endowing them he spread the doctrines of buddha by engraving them on rocks he wanted to spread this religion in and around our country so he carved buddha's teachings on rock edicts pillars and on the walls of the caves <clears throat> throughout the vast empire 
So what else he did? He spread the doctrine, the teachings of Buddha by engraving them on rocks, pillars and so on, on the walls of the caves throughout the vast empire. And fourth important measures adopted for the spread of Buddhism was he appointed officers called Dharma Mahamatras. He appointed a special officers to spread Buddhism. So what do that officers mean? Dharma Mahamatras, uh, <coughs> Yuktas and Rajukas to spread Dharma among the people. So he appointed the special officers known as Dharma Mahamatras, Yuktas and Rajukas to spread Buddhism among the people. He also appointed women Adyaksha Mahamatras, three Adyaksha Mahamatra to take care of women and bring religious awareness among them. Next, he organized <coughs> the third Buddhist council at Pataliputra in 250 BCE to settle the internal differences among the monks. So, 250 BCE, the people are fighting in the name of religion. So, he organized the third Buddhist council in his capital city, Pataliputra, in 250 BCE to settle the internal differences among the monks. And the sixth important measure Ashoka was taken to spread Buddhism was he sent missionaries to preach Buddhism in Afghanistan, Burma, Sri Lanka and Europe. So what he did? He sent missionaries, a special officers to preach Buddhism not only inside our country, outside our country also like Afghanistan, Burma, Sri Lanka and Europe. He sent his son Mahendra and daughter Sangamitra to Sri Lanka with a Bodhi sapling as a symbol of peace. He sent missionaries. At the same time, he sent his son Mahendra and daughter Sangamitra to Sri Lanka, our neighboring country Sri Lanka, with a Bodhi sapling okay, as a symbol of peace. The seventh important measure he took to spread Buddhism. He undertook many welfare activities. He dug wells, built rest houses, planted fruit bearing trees along roadsides, constructed hospitals for men and animals. He never neglected animals. For their sake also he constructed hospitals and established schools. To impart knowledge, he established schools. He made arrangement to feed the poor and physically unfit people. He made arrangement to feed the poor and physically unfit people, those who don't have hands, legs, uh, eyes. So they are physically unfit people. So he made arrangement to feed the poor people and physically unfit people. He was like a father to his subjects. His motto was service and sacrifice. So what was his aim? <coughs> service to the poor people and sacrifice without expecting any remuneration. Doing work to others. That was the motto of Ashoka. His motto was service and sacrifice. He was like a father to his subjects. Ashoka established a large empire in India. He is the only king in the history of the world to renounce war even after victory. Even after victory, he conquered Kalinga, but he put an end to war itself. He renounced war even after victory. He was the <coughs> only king in the history of the world to renounce war even after victory. The effects of Kalinga war moved him to such an extent that he gave up Digvijaya, that is military conquest, and adopted Dharma Vijaya. Dharma Vijaya means winning the hearts of the people, and dedicated his entire life for the peace and welfare of his subjects. H.G. Wells, a great scholar, states that Amidas, the tens of thousands of names of 
monarchs monarchs means kings <clears throat> that crowd the columns of history their majesties and royal highness and the like the name of ashoka shines and shines almost alone like a star so how we appreciated ashoka <clears throat> the great scholar hg wells he states that <clears throat> hamidas the times thousands of names of rulers that crowd the columns of history their majesties and royal highness and the like the name of ashoka shines and shines almost alone like a star so what are the contribution of mauryan dynasty first we are going to see mauryan administration mauryan administration the mauryans established an efficient system of administration they were the first <coughs> to establish an uniform administrative system throughout their empire so which book gives this information arthashastra who wrote arthashastra kautilya arthashastra played an important <coughs> role in the administration of the mauryas first we are going to see the central government so king the king was the head of the state he was the chief source of the three organs of the government that is legislative executive judiciary and military powers the king was bound by the dharma hindu dharma the main duty of the king was to work for the welfare of the people so which was the main duty of the king to work for the happiness of his people next mantri parishad how we will have parliament house in delhi similarly those days we used to have mantri parishad there was a council of minister that is group of minister called mantri parishad to assist the king in the administration the ministers were so what role they will play the ministers they used to suggest certain rules and regulation the ministers were appointed by the king after considering their merits and abilities if they are good in administration so he will appoint them as the ministers the number of ministers varied from 4 to 12 each minister was in charge of one or more departments usually he will appoint more than 12 minister but each minister he must take care of one or more departments all the matters were considered and discussed in mantri parishad where they will discuss their problems how nowadays we are having parliament house like that those days we used to have mantri parishad the king could supersede the advice of the mantri parishad so the king will listen uh, the suggestions of other ministers secretariat so where they will discuss the administrative matters secretariat administrative matters of the central government were divided into 30 departments a single person is not able to look after the administration so he divided administrative matters into 30 departments each under a superintendent a officer known as superintendent they deal with the activities of state such as irrigation market education famine relief etc so what are the duties of these departments they must uh, <coughs> they must deal with the activities of state irrigation artificial method of selling whatever agriculture market buying and selling of goods education famine relief etc now we are going to see the administration of justice in the mauryan empire the king was the highest court of appeal whatever he says that is the law of the country the mauryan empire had two types of courts called dharmastayas and kantaka shodhana dharmastayas deals with civil cases so whatever the when two people are fighting so the king will deal this cases and kantaka shodhana which deals with criminal cases 
like murdering other person, robbing other's property. The, these courts existed in all towns and cities. Village assemblies and its headmen were responsible for justice. Village level, the headman of the village, he is responsible for justice in their areas. Magasthenes observed that punishments were severe, which included beheading, taking out the head, and amputation of limbs. They will cut off their hands and legs. So, uh, punishments were severe. Revenue administration. Now they used to collect tax from the people. Land revenue was the main source of income of the state. One-sixth of the produce was fixed as the tax. For in time, how much they are collecting from the people? One-sixth of the produce was fixed as the tax. Taxes were collected both in cash and kind. How they used to collect the tax? In the form of food grains or in the form of money, gold coins or silver coins. They were collected by local officers. Taxes were also levied on profession. Whatever profession they are doing. So, on that basis, they used to collect tax. House tax, cattle tax, livestock, forest products and sales tax, etc. And it is a vast kingdom. So, the kingdom was divided into provinces. So, who will look after the provincial government? Modern empire was divided into five provinces with their capitals at Girina, Takshashila, Ujjain, Tosali and Suvaranagiri. North, East, West <coughs> uh, and uh, central part of India. So altogether it was divided into five provinces. Girina, Takshashila, Ujjaini, Tosali and Suvaranagiri. Each province was put under the charge of a governor belonging to the royal family. So one governor they appoint, he belonging to the royal family or one of the relatives of the king. The provinces were further divided into districts. How the present India was divided into state later on districts that were governed by Sthanikas. The local people, they will look after the district. Gramika was the head of the village. Once again, these districts will be divided into villages. So, who is in charge of a village? Gramika. The official in charge of 10 villages was called Popa. So, a single person he used to take care of 10 villages. So, what is the name of that officer? Gopa. Ashoka appointed Dharma Mahamatras both in the center and in the provinces. To spread Buddhism, he appointed a special officer known as Dharma Mahamatra, both in the center, that is Pataliputra, as well as in the provinces. Now, city administration. Big, big cities. Who will look after this administration? The Greek ambassador, Megasthenes, gave you a very detailed description about the administration of Pataliputra. So, it is the first city, capital city. The administration of the city was entrusted to a committee of 30 members, divided into six wards of five each. So the city of Pataliputra, it was looked after by a 30 members, divided into each 30 members, it was divided into six wards. They looked after the problems related to roads, markets, hospitals, temples, schools, water supply, etc. And military administration. In order to protect their kingdom, they must have a strong military. So who will look after the military administration? The military administration of Chandragupta was very efficient and well organized. The king personally led the army. So who will lead the army? The king during wars. The army of Chandragupta consisted of 6 lakh infantry, 30 cavalry and 9,000 elephants. The war office was administered by 6 boards. So nowadays we are having army, navy and air force like that. We used to have infantry, cavalry and elephants. By standing on the land they will fight. By, standing, by sitting on the elephant they will fight. 
by sitting on the horses they will fight so 6 lakh infantry 10000 cavalry and 9000 elephants the war office was administered by six boards each consisting of five members six boards they have divided five members will be there for each board they were navy transport infantry cavalry chariots and elephant boards now we are going to discuss about art and architecture of Mauryans. Mauryas built various buildings, palaces and monuments. The buildings prior to Ashoka were built of wood. Ashoka gave up the use of wood and brick and started using stone. So Mauryas gave importance for art and architecture. They built so many buildings, palaces and monuments. The buildings prior before Ashoka were built out of wood. So Ashoka gave up the use of wood and brick and started using stone. Next, stupas. Santi stupa. It is just like a dome shaped palace. The stupas were doomed like mounds of brick or stone built in honor of Buddha or over the relics of Buddha. It is believed that Ashoka built about 84,000 stupas all over his empires. So how many stupas he built? Uh, Ashoka built 84,000 stupas all over his empire. Stupas. It is built to honor Buddha or over the relics of Buddha. So Ashoka built about 84,000 stupas all over his empire. They have perished in course of time. The only surviving stupa is at Sanchi in Madhya Pradesh. The only stupa at present it is in Madhya Pradesh. It is the biggest stupa. Palace just like a temple. So it is just like a mound, dome like mounds of brick or stone. Palace. Chandragupta Maurya's palace at Pataliputra was famous. The Chinese pilgrim Pahim who came to India gives us a vivid description of the foundation of the palace. He exclaimed that it was created by God. So, Fahim, he visited India 1500 years ago. He gave, he gives us a vivid description of the foundation of the palace. And he appreciated that it was created by God. Caves. Ashoka and his grandson Dasharatha built caves for meditation of the Buddhist monks. So inside the cave they will do meditation. So for that Ashoka and his grandson Dasharatha built caves. They built caves for meditation of the Buddhist monks. The caves in Barabar mountains near Gaya, the Nagarjuna hills belong to this age. So the caves in Barabar mountains near Gaya, Bodha Gaya and the Nagarjuna hills in Andhra Pradesh belonging to this age. Pillars, iron pillars or the stone pillars. The stone pillars in various designs were built during the reign of Ashoka. It is believed that Ashoka built more than 30 pillars. Each stone pillar weighs 50 tons. What is the weight of this Stone pillar 50 tons and measures 30 feet in height. The most important among them is the pillar at Saranath. The stone pillar at Saranath. It consists of, so what it consists? It consists of an inverted lotus. So what we, will, we used to see on this pillar? The inverted lotus. The Dharma Chakra. In the center of a national flag we will have Ashoka Chakra or Dharma Chakra and and the Abhakas, four lions. They never used to see each other. Abhakas, four lions are seated back to back. The capital of Sarnath pillar is the national emblem of India. The four-headed lion is the national emblem of India. So now we are going to discuss after the decline of Mauryan dynasty, Shatavahanas, they become the powerful ruler of South India.
the first dynasty which ruled south india was shatavahanas after the decline of the mauryas the shatavahanas who were the feudatories of mauryas declared independence their kingdom lasted for about 400 years the shatavahanas ruled a country more than 400 years it is very difficult to determine the exact date of the establishment of the shatavahana kingdom because no evidences so it is very difficult to determine the correct date of the establishment of the shatavahana kingdom simoka was the founder of this dynasty so who is the founder of this dynasty one mark they are asking simoka he was the founder of this dynasty pratisthana modern python in maharashtra was the capital of shatavahana so one mark they are asking ma so which was the capital of shatavahanas python in maharashtra the old name of python is pratisthana at present it is in maharashtra was the capital of the shatavahanas some of the important rulers of shatavahana kingdom were hala gautami putra shatakarni vasishta putra kulamayi and yagnashri the 17th king of shatavahana dynasty was hala he himself was a great scholar and he wrote gatha sapta sati in prakrit language the 17th ruler of <coughs> shatavahana dynasty was hala he himself he was a great scholar he wrote a book known as gatha sapta sati in prakrit language so we are going to learn about gautami putra shatakarni he ruled 106 to 130 ce so 2000 uh, 1900 years ago he ruled our country the shatavahana power received a setback at the hands of the weak successors of hala after the death of hala the successors were very weak gautami putra shatakarni re established the power and prestige of the shatavahanas he is described as the destroyer of the three dynasty shakas yavana and pahalvas he defeated shaka king nahapana and restuck the silver coins with his emblem and other achievements of gautami putra shatakarni as his achievements are recorded by his mother gautami bhalashri in the nasik cave inscription where we will see his achievements where her mother recorded means nasik cave inscription she claims gautami putra shatakarni to have performed ashwamedha yaga his important titles were tri samudra toya pita vahana that means he defeated shaka yavana pahalva misudana the contribution of shatavahanas in the field of art and architecture was enormous even today we are able to see <coughs> they constructed several buddhist stupas viharas and chaityas these are found in amaravati the capital city of andhra pradesh nagarjuna konda karli nasik kanheri etc so tomorrow we are going to discuss question and answers for this lesson mauryas